Welcome. And today I have the real privilege of sitting down with Maxine Tuan, an exceptional legal expert from St. Andrew Legal Clinic in Portland, Oregon, to gain some insights into some crucial aspects of divorce and family law. And with her vast experience guiding clients through this really intric intricate process, Maxine and I will discuss her invaluable heads up advice for those who are embarking on their really unique journeys. And furthermore, she can also shed light on the significance of building a strong divorce team. And she'll also share some valuable tips on what to consider when selecting professionals, such as an attorney, a divorce financial planner, mediator, et cetera. And lastly, we'll explore a point in a chapter in her career where she recounts a memorable case or situation that she runs into that has impacted her. So thank you, Maxine, for joining me today. Thanks, Teresa, for having me. I'm I'm so glad to be here to, to talk about um, divorce. And it's a challenging topic, but it's one that we are both rooted in and happy to give as much advice as I can and share my experience. I appreciate that. So I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, can you provide us with a little bit about your background knowledge um, regarding you and your practice? You know, for example, with so many areas of law, you could have chosen why family law and how long you've been practicing, you know, et cetera. So currently I am the executive director of a nonprofit family law firm called St. Andrew Legal Clinic. I've been here in this new, new-ish position for about five months. Prior to joining St. Andrew Legal Clinic, I was a partner at a firm downtown practicing almost exclusively family law. I've been doing family law for about eight years now. Um, it's an area of law that I'm very passionate about. Um, the reason why I chose family law is because I really thought deeply about becoming a counselor um, and a therapist. And um, I, I find that family law marries the intellectual part of my brain that likes, um, you know, negotiations and settlement and law and being in court with also the really compassionate aspects of, you know, being there for my clients, being an advocate, understanding the personal dynamics that occur, um, well, that exist for families going through a transition, um, sharing sort of the personal space and just sort of being an advocate for a really challenging area, a challenging time for a person's life. Those two, you know, family law sort of marries those two areas really perfectly for me. Um, and so, you know, I, I plan to do it for a really long time. And that's why, that's why I'm a family law attorney. That is so interesting. I, I never thought of that aspect with marrying those two very different areas together. And I like the way you explain that. So I know that each divorce is truly unique and everyone really does go on their own special journey through this process. And some go faster than others. If you could change anything or give a heads up, a, you know, piece of advice to someone just starting down this path, what might that be? That's such a good question because, you know, the best type of client that I represent is one that is prepared to go through a divorce and um, that, that acceptance journey is going to look different for every family and every person. What I would say is the most important, and I tell my clients this every initial meeting I have with a new person, is to just shore up your support systems, whether that be a therapist, family, friends, make sure that you have a good system in place um, around you to help you through what may be challenging and will certainly um, cause sort of differences in your life, right? And in regards to your scheduling and your children and, and potentially where you live, those are, all, those are all, you know, really unsettling things that can happen to a person. So making sure you have good support systems is number one. Mm -hmm. Two, I would say just do your research. There is a lot of information out there. Some are not, you know, all accurate. And so, but there's some really good um, seminars in place, um, like clear transitions that, you know, we both work on um, and um, 
just other informational sessions about divorce that a person can attend. I think it's good to, you know, have a good sense of your finances before you start the process. So if you do work with the financial advisor, um, start thinking about and talking to um, those people in your, in your life and just getting the information before you start the process, the more organized you are, um, the more streamlined and efficient um, it is. So those are my two biggest piece of information is just have your support system, do your research and, and have the information that you're going to need um, prepared so that you can do this process efficiently. Though that is actually really good advice. I think many times people go into divorce and they are totally unprepared for the amount of information that you need to help them, you know, complete the process. Yeah. And I think that that is totally reasonable because, you know, we, we don't, I don't certainly don't check my mortgage, you know, principal balance every <laughs> single month when I make my mortgage balance, you know, I just make that payment. Um, and, you know, life moves quickly. And so I totally appreciate that aspect of, you know, needing to take the time and getting the information. Um, and, you know, you're saving for your retirement every month that gets, you know, hopefully pulled from your paycheck. And you don't really think about what that figure or that balance go is going to be looking like. Um, and so, but that's all information that you're going to need. So mm -hmm. the more information you have up front, the less, you know, the less time it's going to take while you're going through the divorce process. That actually makes a lot of sense. You know, be prepared uh, and it'll probably flow a little bit better, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> so I can only imagine the benefit of someone who is actually going through a divorce or contemplating a divorce to have a strong divorce team. What do you re recommend as what to look for when selecting people to be part of that divorce team? So I always tell my clients that finding a divorce attorney is, you know, a little bit like dating, you know, you want to have someone that you're working with that you have good communication with. I think that that's number one. Um, you want someone that you feel like you connect with in the moment when you are talking about your um, family and your transitions and your struggles um, you don't want someone that doesn't provide you that support, I think. Um, and so, you know, I, I always tell my clients, go talk to as many professionals as you need and come back when you have made a decision, a certain decision that, you know, you and I connected the best and you're ready to proceed. I think that knowing that you have a strong connection with your, your family law attorney is going to be really important. Um, I would also say, you know, look to, you know, we have a lot of uh, professionals working in the divorce space, right? So, um, you know, like a CDLP, like a lending professional, I don't think, I think more and more times I'm telling and referring my clients to those that are experts in those areas. So if you have a house and you're not sure whether you can retain it, I'm not the best person to tell you, you know, I think talking to someone like you as a CDLP is a much better use of that time and financial resources to figure out, can you actually hold the mortgage to a home on your own, right? Um, and then there's a lot of other professionals, co-parenting, coaches, you're going to need to learn a different way to communicate um, with your spouse, in a much more different manner than you may have been communicating with each other. And there are actually skills. This is a skill that one learns um, and it's hard. And so there are experts out there that can teach you those, those skills and tips and tricks on how to do that. So the more that you have around you in terms of professionals, I think the better. And every single time, I think when you're talking to a professional, I think it's just about that connection, about that sense of support, um, that, you know, you're connecting with the person that you're talking to and you feel like they're, they would be good, you know, for your team. Um, it, it's, it's not something that is, you know, tangential. It's almost just about how you feel when you are sharing the space with them. So. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I think it's different today where you just don't have a divorce attorney and that's all you have. It's you, you surround yourself 
with a group of professionals that can support you in various ways that, because we're not all experts in everything, we're experts in our own fields. Yeah, that's right. I I joke that family law per, uh, attorneys are the last generalists, you know, of, of <laughs> lawyers. You know, I know just enough about uh, income tax because you know we deal with taxes when we're talking about divorce. I know just enough about real estate transactions because many times a house is um, the biggest asset in a family. You know, mm-hmm. I <laughs> I I know just enough about financial planning and retirement <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but I'm certainly not an expert in any of those fields. But I do feel like I bring those um, professionals around and I give referrals out and and um, so yes, I agree that it's about a team and and um, lawyers are really good about knowing when and what they know. And if I'm not an expert in the area, I am I am not an ego person. I just say, go talk to somebody else. That's an area of law that you know Teresa is expert in. Um, go talk to her. That is that is really great. I, I love that concept. So Moving along a little bit, do you have one memorable case or situation that you've worked through? And if so, what is what what impacted you and what did you get out of it? Yeah, so I I don't know that I have one specific case that is memorable, but um, something that I find the most rewarding in my legal practice is representing children in cases. Um, so you act as a child's attorney and you're advocating for a child's voice if they're, you know, mature and older, or you're acting as a best interest sort of person um, for a younger child. And I have really found that area of practice really rewarding because in some way it's similar to working almost like a neutral or a mediator mm-hmm. because you're working with, you know, both sides with parents, um, but you're really in the middle trying to advocate for the child's perspective and what's in the best interest for the child. And um, really trying to get the parents to understand and reach an agreement, because the more agreement you can reach, truly the better outcome it is for kids, right? The longer and more prolonged um, contested litigation is for um, the family, I think there's more and more negative effects for the kids. And there's a lot of research to back that up. So I really love um, being in that position. I do more and more of those cases. And um, I love being that mediator in the middle, trying to sort of broker the deal um, while just centering, you know, the child's perspective. And I found that that has really lent itself in in all my other cases, because I always try to now tell my clients, think about your kids, how would they, you know, even if it's something financial, how would this impact your child, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And just trying to center peacefulness, amicableness to try and preserve the family relationship as much as possible, because that's going to lead to a better outcome for your kids. That is actually really a great perspective. Um, because I think sometimes people get so wrapped up in themselves and even, you know, they, they want to take time for their kids, but I think that's a great perspective because sometimes kids need their own representation. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think it, it's warrants, you know, it, every case, right. But mm-hmm. when there is, um, especially a, a teenager that may have owned their own perspective, or maybe a child just needs to be protected a little bit more. They mm-hmm. can be really helpful. Um, and certainly it is an option here in Oregon to appoint a child an attorney. Um, and I I just really like those types of cases. I think they're impactful for me, impactful for also the families that I'm helping. That's wonderful. And I'm I'm sure you have a really positive effect in the outcome in in doing that type of family law work. Yeah, I I think so. I think so. I I really only have had, I mean they they're hard cases obviously, but I think that I am making a positive impact. I think it's always helpful for judges, for parents to have sort of a direct insight to their child. Um and again, just to echo what you said to take yourself out of the picture, you know, and really center the kids in it is is for me what what it's all about. So 
That's amazing. Oh my gosh. So I really appreciate you sharing your valuable time with me today. And I really respect you as an outstanding family law professional in our Portland, Vancouver area. So um, where would someone who might benefit from your expertise go to learn more about you? So they could go to my website. It's um, standrewlegalclinic.org. Um, they could learn more about me through my bio. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, I have a LinkedIn and <laughs> so those would be two places. Um, I'm happy to share my information with you as well. If people want to contact me, um, I always try to, you know, take the time to respond to inquiries. I appreciate that. And then one extra question I'm going to ask you is, can you tell us a little bit about St. Andrew Legal Clinic and how it differs from a, 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 a an attorney firm that is for profit. Yeah, thank thank you. That's a that's a really good question. So St. Andrew Legal Clinic is one of the few co-pay legal clinics in the United States. What we do is um, charge clients reduced legal fees on a sliding scale based on a client's monthly income. Um, and family size and, and considering family size and income. And our lowest hourly rate is $60 per hour and we go all the way up to 200. And what we do is we have essentially um, a fundraising and also grant portion that helps us. But it's such an important resource for our community because it's you know more and more expensive to hire a private attorney. Um, and so I it's just an important resource. We have a huge amount of need out there. And um, I'm just really proud of the work that we do here at the clinic. So we have two offices, one in Hillsboro, one in Portland. We represent the entire Portland metro area, including Yam Hill and Columbia County, um, six attorneys. It's just a good group over here. I think that is an amazing thing that you all do. You are correct. Divorce is very expensive and not everybody can afford some of the firms that are out there. And I love that um, you do this work because there are folks that need help that can't afford that. Yeah. And and I think it's really equitable the way that we're doing it, you know, on a sliding scale basis. If you earn less, then, you know, we charge you a less hourly rate. And if you earn a little bit more, you know, you pay a higher hourly rate. I think that's really about our mission is access to justice, equitableness, um, in terms of, you know, access to a legal representation, legal counsel. Um, we are also restarting our night clinic. <laughs> so <laughs> night clinic is, you know, a thing that we host every Wednesday night in our Portland office. We have 200 plus volunteer attorneys in the Portland metro area that comes together to give 30 minute legal consultations to clients. Sometimes, well, many times the clients that come and see us through night clinic it's their only legal advice that they can afford. So it's just a critical resource um, in our community. And um, it's so great to, to be doing this in person again and to be connecting with our volunteer attorney too. So that is an amazing group of volunteer attorneys to support this. Yes. Yeah. We're so fortunate. I think, you know, attorneys in general are helping people and you really see that when they come and take their time. Um, especially at night after a long day of work to still help people. Um, we're just, yeah, we're really fortunate. That's amazing. Well, I am so glad you shared that with me. I did not know that you were opening that back up again. So that's really great. Yeah. Do you yes. have one final thought that you would like to leave with today? Um, One final thought. I would just say that I try to take a really like, positive spin on divorce and just and just say this is really transition and, that, and what that means is divorce is going to lead you to a better place right you've made a decision for a reason and it doesn't have to be this big bad thing it could be something really positive it can bring people independence it can bring people a lot more peace um you know if you are not getting along and you're separating your kids could be in a better place by being shielded a little bit more by co-parent conflict um i really try to keep 
focused on the end result. And I encourage my clients to think about that too, is it's going to be hard. The end result is you're going to have a new level of independence, new, you know, and that can be really freeing and empowering for folks. So. That is an amazing perspective. I really have never heard it spoken of that way. And that's great. I love that. I love leaving with that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you again, Maxine, for being with me. I really appreciate your time today and um, see everyone later. Thanks everyone.